Does all hardware work with Linux? Well, today we're going to look at hardware and Linux. If you are running Linux and you need to purchase some form of hardware, we're going to have a look at that question today and talk about what you can do. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to talk about hardware because I had to buy some recently and I wanted to talk about what it takes to get certain pieces of hardware that may not already be in the Linux kernel running on your system. So first and foremost, Linux is great because a lot of hardware out there is really standardized and is embedded in the Linux kernel. So it doesn't matter which mouse you have, which keyboard you have, for the most part, most things are gonna work out of the box, especially as you're progressing on because the Linux kernel releases pretty quick and it stays up with the hardware releases quite well. This is why Linux Mint now has the, uh, the, the Edge version, which has a brand new Linux kernel in the event you're running new hardware but wanna run Linux Mint, but it has the old standard one which works with overall better support on older hardware out of the box. Uh, but it does have a few interesting trade-offs. Now, that being said, a lot of your stuff, as I said, is fairly standardized. Getting mice and keyboards and basically graphics cards to work is certainly easy for Linux. Now, sometimes the absolute latest and greatest of the cutting edge will need separate drivers. And this is where we fall into the whole area of proprietary drivers versus open source drivers. And this is why NVIDIA has classically not worked on Linux as well as AMD because AMD has generally open sourced the drivers far before NVIDIA has. Although we're starting to see a little bit of change in that. As far as your wireless cards, most wireless cards used now work out of the box with Linux with a few odd exceptions, but for the most part, you're going to have a good experience on Linux, but there are times that you're not using basic hardware that is just embedded inside the computer where you need to do some form of attachments. This might be a USB Wi-Fi dongle, which I found recently the TP links <laughs> do not work with Linux kernel out of the box, at least not the versions I tested. That was, I think, 5.15 maybe. Um, and then you might have something like a Qualcomm tablet, like niche hardware. These are things you might need to get, uh, depending on your field. You might need some form of drawing tablet. That's what the Qualcomms are. And I can't even specify or bring up examples of other niche hardware because I'm not in an industry that requires niche hardware. So if you are looking for external hardware, you need to make sure that it works. Now, printers and scanners kind of sit on that edge. Microsoft right now is talking to people about doing a standardized basic printer driver. That would be like be absolute gold. Go Microsoft, go Microsoft. Um, but uh, with that being said, right now, the drivers for things are all over the place. As far as if you're wanting good printers and things, the one printer company that generally works well with Linux is HP. Of course, I would rather um, uh, I would rather go and uh, jump off the Grand Canyon or something than use HP. I mean, they have open source drivers and even install an HP utility on many Linux distributions, but they don't let you use open source ink. Go figure how stupid this is. If like if HP was my only option for printing, I'd be going back to petroglyphs on uh, chiseling out stones on wall tablets. If the only computers left were HP, I'd switch to Mac, okay? Don't buy HP products. They're absolute garbage, and they are seeking simply to defraud the customer to bolster their bottom line. Don't use HP products. But that being said, I've not had a lot of problems with a lot of different printers either. Brother printers work well. Usually they will work with the Linux kernel out of the box, but Brother also makes all of their drivers available on Linux. And Epson generally works better for your printers out of the box. The scanner is not as much. And uh, just looking at other hardware, what we want to do is consider if you need to pick something up, you want to do your research first. It's not like you go out and you just pick up whatever you need without research. If there's four or five different options, look at those options and investigate how you get those running on Linux first. So in my case, I do use a scanner around here, whether it's scanning in business cards or 
uh, keeping digital copies of my business receipts or things like that. Well, I had a big brother printer with a scanner combination. The scanner has since stopped working and I needed a new scanner. So being that I live on the road, I figured I'd look into one of these Epson Workforce ES50s uh, because it's very small, uh, tiny little thing. It's USB powered. I can plug the guy in, feed my paper through, and then stow it nicely out of my way. And if you look at the box, the first thing you might do if you're going to a Best Buy or something is you might look on the side of the box somewhere. It's going to tell you the compatibility. And on the compatibility down here, it says Windows 10, Windows 8, 8.1, Windows 7, Mac OS. And that beautiful, wonderful, lovely word, Linux, is missing. Shame. But the good news is if you do the research, you find that you go to the Epson site, they do officially make Linux drivers. Now, before we dive into this, and I'm going to show you a few examples of where to get drivers, the first thing I want you to keep in mind is this. Do not download random drivers from random places on the internet. You always make sure you are doing it on the official manufacturer's website. Okay, so I pulled up a few things that I've recently had to search for just as an example. So I had a friend of mine's internet um, was starting to go bad, uh, the wireless card in the computer. And so we picked up some TP-Link uh, USB adapters and the TP-Link USB adapters uh, actually did not work on Linux out of the box, but they do make a driver for Linux available. So what I do is I just go over to the manufacturer's sites. This is TP-Link Dot com and uh, I went down to the home, the adapters, USB adapters, and then we have a list of all of these, and I don't remember which one we bought, so I'll just grab a random driver. Actually, I already grabbed a random driver that I knew had Linux. I think they probably all will, um, but uh, here's the hardware version, so you'll find something about that with the make and the model, and then here is the driver. So here is a Linux driver. Here's a Mac beta driver. Here's the official Mac driver. Uh, so probably this is just a newer version, most likely. Here's Windows. Uh, here's an older Mac one. So you can see that you can go directly from the manufacturer's page into their download centers. You can usually search up your product and find your drivers. So here is Brother. And with the Brother printers, you can select what you are on. And then from the Linux, you have the option of RPM or DEB. And then over here, there's actually mobile drivers now. That's new. Never knew that. <laughs> That's actually just showed up. So then you just grab whichever system you're working with. Of course, if you're running a Debian or anything downstream of Ubuntu, uh, you're going to want the DEB version. And uh, the RPM is your Fedoras, your OpenSUSAs. If you're doing Arch, see which one you can get working on your system. Or check the Arch user repository. Actually, I do believe I have this working on Arch from the Arch user repository. So there you have it. Uh, and then, of course, with Ubuntu, remember that a .deb file doesn't install as easily out of the box in the GUI, but it does still work to install in the terminal. And usually all of these drivers, you're installing it with the terminal anyway, so don't worry about it. When you click OK on this, it's actually going to take you to uh, here's the driver install utilities. Here's the just the print drivers. Here's just the scan drivers because this printer's a, a printer scanner combination. And I think on this one, if I remember correctly, the printer worked out of the box, but the scanner didn't. And so I installed the drivers anyway. And once you download this, they actually do provide instructions for how to install it, which is just going in, extracting the file, and then running the uh, install.sh file on bash on the terminal. So that worked out pretty well. In this case here today, I just picked this guy up from the store recently. And as I go on over to, I'm officially on Epson's page. And I go specifically to this page for this, the Workforce ES50, choose your operating system. We have all these blasphemous operating systems up here. And then at the very bottom, oh, look at that pure gold. We have Linux. Now, when you go ahead and hit this, Here's the drivers, here's your support for Linux, and here is your Linux drivers, here's your FAQs, and here is the manual so you can download things. Clicking in on the drivers is going to send you over to the download center. And um, why you have to, why it doesn't take us directly to it is kind of annoying, but just go ahead and type in your ES50 over here. 
and just make sure Linux is in that system there. And so here is the drivers, which is for the 50, 500W, 500W2, uh, and 500WR. And you'll see that, the I mean, this is a brand new driver. just came out, I mean, just over a month ago. Hit the download option over here, and this is going to take us to the option we have to accept their nonsense. And you now have the option to grab the uh, download page. There's the manual. Now, you can get the source file. So you these are open source drivers. You can actually see that and see the source code. Hit the download page, and now we have our DEB, and we have our RPM, and we have 32 and 64-bit supported on each of those. And look at this. We even have Ubuntu Mate and Raspberry ARM scanner drivers. So these guys are up to date with some of the latest stuff. 32-bit. Um, for the Raspberry Pi, but that's okay. But hey, the fact that we can grab this particular device and use this, if you are in need of a scanner, then this is a certainly an option. And I'm just tell, showing you this just to show you the, the process by which you did it. Of course, we're not going to install it on here, but we're going to go ahead and download it and I'll show you the file. So it's downloading a tarball, which has a deb file in it. Uh, let me, once this downloads, then we'll go ahead and show you what that file looks like. All right, so that gave us this tarball download, which when extracted is this. Uh, but inside of this, we have a core, which is, this is the actual .deb file. So this is what the file should look like. And then we have plugins over here, which is a free plugin. Oh, this is the non-free plugin. So you have the free and the non-free option. And then here is the bash file. So usually I just pull up a terminal and go to the folder and what are we at? We're at Epson scan. Here's this. And then we would just do a bash install sh. Put this all on one line for you. So that's how you would install it. Hit enter. It's going to prompt you for your password and enter it. I actually don't want to install it. So we're not going to do that because this computer does not do any scanning. Uh, but you can actually open this guy up and see what it looks like. So if you are concerned about what might be in here, uh, you can see everything that it's doing. So it's not like you have any weird surprises. It's installing stuff and they do make the source code available to you. So that is how the, uh, that is how your driver install process is going to work on most hardware that is out there. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you, um, uh, right now proof of life that this guy works. I recorded this on the phone. So here is that. All right, so here's the production computer that I usually do for scanning. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and plug the scanner in to the USB port. And then we have a flashing light down here. And I'm pushing that button there. Make sure you have a solid button. And then here on Linux Mint, I'm just going to use the document scanner. Now, the driver tools did add this Epson scan. Uh, but that is not necessary to get it to work. If you don't see the scanner showing up in your document scanner, run that Epson scan printer once uh, just to pull it up. And then once you do, it should appear inside of your document scanner right there. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to take this business card and I'm going to put this over here. And we're going to push our scan button and then just make sure that business card feeds in. And then boom, it scanned our business card. All right, I just have a, a random piece of note paper here. Put this guy in there, push the scan and feed it through. And what I'm liking actually about this scanner is it's actually automatically detecting the size of the paper, which is gonna save me some time because I used to have to go through and manually crop everything. You can see it, uh, it is saving things pretty nicely. And of course, this is just using the document scanner built-in tool that's available on several Linux distributions. If you don't have any, uh, any scanning software, the document scanning software that comes with the Epson it looks like is allowed, uh, is able to scan as well. So there you have it. This hardware is not in the Linux kernel. I just downloaded it from the internet and you can see it works. So hopefully this helped you out to understand a little bit more about drivers and Linux and how to make sure that what you need to get for your system, you can actually get to work. The biggest take home message is if you need new hardware, do your homework first search out, find the actual drivers to make sure you have them. And before you install those drivers just out of the box, I just plug the device in first to see if the Linux kernel can handle it. So overall, I had a good experience getting this guy working and I'm looking forward to scanning all my business records in for the 
KGB, <clears throat> IRS uh, this year coming in with the uh, tax season coming up. Uh, but with that, guys, thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Hit that uh, like button down there and leave us a comment. Let us know what type of hardware. And if it would be really good for a community um, awareness here, let us know which hardware you've experimented with that you have not gotten to work and which ones that you've had to install drivers for the manufacturer. Let us know your experience on different type of hardware down below. That Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash t-o-m-m or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.